let's take a look at a second rotation matrix example. I'm showing here the kinematic diagram of a spherical manipulator. We want to find the rotation matrices for each of the two frame pairs in this kinematic diagram. So we want to find the rotation from 0 to 1, the rotation from 1 to 2, and the rotation from 2 to 3. Let's start with the first rotation. From frame 0 to frame 1. The first thing that we do is we try to figure out how we can rotate frame 0 to get it to match frame 1. We first look to see if there are any axes between these two frames that match. Here we see that axis x0 is in the same direction as axis x1. So we should be able to get frame 0 to match frame 1 by rotating around x0. We see that if we rotated frame 0 90 degrees around x0, then frame 0 would match frame 1. So the first thing we do in our rotation matrix is we write the rotation that represents a 90 degree rotation around x. We go get the standard form of the matrix for a rotation around x and we plug in 90 for theta. Now we're not quite done with this rotation matrix yet because we also have the rotation theta1 that affects the rotation between frame 0 and frame 1. So we need to account for that in our rotation matrix. The way we do that is by left multiplying the matrix we have by the rotation around z matrix plugging in theta1. So I go and get the standard form of a rotation around z and I plug in theta1. And that has to be left multiplied by the matrix I've already found. And I'm going to calculate out these values that we know. The cosine of 90 is 0. The sine of 90 is 1. And then I multiply these two matrices together. And I'm done with the rotation between frame 0 and frame 1. So I'm going to erase the rest of this so I can set this matrix aside so we can use it later on. Okay, now let's move on to find the rotation matrix from frame 1 to frame 2. The first thing I do is I try to figure out how to get frame 1 to match frame 2. The first thing we do is we look to see if any of the axes in frame 1 match any of the axes in frame 2. Here we see that the axis y1 is in the same direction as the axis y2. So I'm going to rotate around y. If I would rotate 90 degrees around y, that would get the x1 axis to be pointing into the page, just like x2 is, and it would get z1 pointing to the right, just like z2. So to get frame 1 to match frame 2, we'll rotate 90 degrees around y. 
So I go and get the standard matrix for a rotation around Y and I plug in 90 for theta. Now I'm not done here yet because I also have the angle theta 2 that affects the rotation between the frame 1 and frame 2. The theta angle is around Z and I have to left multiply this. So I go and get the standard matrix for a rotation around Z and I'll plug in theta 2. Now I have to multiply this matrix we already found on the right and I'm going to calculate this out so it's a little bit easier to work with. The cosine of 90 is 0, sine of 90 is 1, so this will be negative 1, and lastly I do the multiplication. And we're done with the rotation matrix from 1 to 2. So I'll go ahead and set that matrix aside so that we can use it later on. Now the last matrix I need to find is the rotation from 2 to 3. So I will start out by trying to figure out what kind of rotation I would need to get frame 2 to match frame 3 we can see here that frame 2 already matches frame 3. And in that case, what we do is we use the identity matrix. The identity matrix means no rotation. Now, because this joint is a prismatic joint and doesn't have an angle theta, there's no other part to the rotation between frame 2 and frame 3. So I don't have to do that whole left multiplying by a rotation around Z because there is no other rotation around Z. Here I'm done already with the rotation matrix between frame 2 and frame 3. So I can just go ahead and set this rotation aside and we're done with all of the rotation matrices that we need for this kinematic diagram.